Hey, what's going on, guys? Hope the team is doing well. It's Sunday evening. Jason Jenkins, uh, Jenkins Risk Management, Jenkins Capital Management. Uh, I want to highlight a little bit of what we did last week after I go through just a couple um, kind of my thoughts for the going into the week here. And I don't know what we got going on right now. I mean, just more of the same stuff, right? So the biggest levels right here across global macro i did a bunch of analysis this weekend and um i'll have that on the site at jenkinscm.com on the under the free analysis section that's kind of a little bit of a vlog i have going on but i'll I'll put some actual not just videos but i'll put some some free analysis on there but i i went through a lot of the global macro markets from asia to the americas to europe um and then i did a lot of work looking at the currencies markets last yesterday and Friday. And um, the big thing I, I kind of went back and I thought about when we were trading, when I was on the desk in 2007, 2008 and what the dollar did and the dollar actually can sell off more here. Typically when we get gross slowing, the lows are trying to trying to break guys right, right as we speak here. Um, let me come back to the dollar. So right now on the open, oil is getting smashed on this news. So I guess the Saudis are going to play hardball. And um, I covered some more of my Russell short. I'm going to stay core short. Um, I did that in another account. The book came out of some Euro dollar futures. Uh, the way to play this, guys, this is going to go to 100. And the Fed's just going to have to cut to zero. So this is going to go to 100. This is the front month. You can trade. And kind of pick your contract. Uh, there's a little bit more room on this front month. They're probably going to have to end up rolling it, um, but that's okay. So don't lose your position. Keep a core. Like I took a little bit off here, and I'm I'm just going to keep adding to it um, and try to get bigger on on the on the move up. So I'm been playing with house money for a long time, but. On the pullbacks, I add, and then I try to add and add, and then eventually take profit and keep the core position. So we'll keep working around that. There was actually an opportunity to buy late in the day. I just didn't, I already had some on and didn't feel like, I kind of like the amount of cash we raised last week. Last week was another huge week for us, the team, myself. Um, I probably did over 75 grand, guys, just, just on my futures accounts that I have last week. So. I've had some calls with you. Some of you guys are on the fence last week and I just encourage you. I mean, I took, let me show you. I took this, one of these accounts with just 15 grand in it. And just to, sh just to show you guys like what's possible. Um, I want to encourage you, but that's the beauty of futures. When you can start small, risk a little bit, but you get into these winners and you add to it and you add to it. So, Try to block out my account. This is one of them. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. So the, uh, here's a net liquidating value, 75,000. We're up at 62 here. We're at the first week in March, year to date. So this is, I mean, this is a lot of winners here. A lot of winners. I'm working a small short on the VIX, which is out of the money, but I'm also long too. So um, we trade, we talk about a lot in the, that's my biggest out of, out of the money position right now. Um, but I'm going to end up selling, like we get towards 50 on the VIX, I'll, I'll put another short futures lot out. And at, at some point, VIX will pull back to 40, 30, 20. So I know if I sell 50, I'm only short a couple lots. I'm not getting carried out like these guys at, at the end of the day on Friday. There was a bit, there was a huge market maker in Chicago that got taken out um, right here. This big, this is him being short vol and having to cover and be long and getting squeezed and having to buy S and P's and then completely blew up. A lot of that happened. A lot of these market movements are options related, gamma related. Same thing in the bond market. A lot to do with convexity. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me flip back over. Shoot. This is, I'm not really happy with this video. I don't know what Zoom, what Zoom's deal is. If I have, if I have too many programs open or what the deal is, but 
this squeeze is what I was talking about right here. This was options related right here into the close. So guys that are short the VIX, we're stopping out. And then that, as, as that relates to the other side of that, they're buying because they're massively short ball. So they have to buy S&Ps as part of that unwind. Um, <laughs> I'm jumping all over the place. I don't know what I was going to say on that. Oh, so I'm only short a couple of lots. And I'm actually long, if you guys will see on the, on the ball here. I'll teach some of you guys this on the prop program or if you're on the options program. And being um, being uh, long and short at the same time, I'm kind of like like I'll I'll buy the thirty minute or fifteen minute dip, and get a good five point rally or a couple point rally on the VIX, and I'll pull five grand profits out, and then the longer term shorts I'm layering into that. And then, I mean, if I sell one up at 50, I'm pretty confident that at some point I'll be able to buy that back at 45, 40. I mean, there's 15, 20 grand and just trading around a few futures contracts like that. The thing with being um, VIX futures tie up a little bit of capital, but when you're long and short, it balances out your buying power. So there's, there's a lot of little tricks like that guys. If you join the prop program, I can teach you. But more importantly, I mean, I don't know how, if you have a small account, yeah, there's a lot of leverage and futures, but you're not going to be able to take advantage of these types of global macro moves by having to go into the ETF market and buy actual shares. I mean, to get a meaningful TLT position, maybe if you just want to buy the shares, I mean, it's like buying a stock. You, you have to buy, tie up so much of your capital. Um, in addition to the prop program, you, I help you work through with, um, Chicago firm to get you guys funded. So you get the coaching, all my courses, it's great value. You need to reach out to me if you're interested in that. Uh, the on the options side, we've done, let me get back to the markets. On the options side, we've done, uh, had some nice trades lately. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll disappear. Oh, All right, so on equities, we're, we're taking out the, two, the February 28 lows. We should test pi here, but this is what I was saying with the prop team guys last week is that the real risk in this market, all the crashes happen when you break the weekly and daily bands. So there is real crash risk here. If we can't hold the bottom of the channel, what we call the bands on the weekly, there's not a lot of support. I mean, this is the NASDAQ to really 7,000, you got the 200s kind of rising into that same area. And then, of course, the, when the Fed panicked back in December 2018, that's a big level. The Dow, it's around 22,000. We're already starting to break. So I, I'm, I, this is, this, I don't know what's going to hold this market in here. Um, I think we got to test these 2018 lows. I've been saying that for a while. So same game plan into this week. We're going to keep keeping core long and treasuries, especially in the front end. And then when you get, when we get pullbacks, day trade and swing trade and tens and out to the duration thirties or ultras, we just keep buying dips. Um, I like playing the Russell short. And then when you get your backups on like the NASDAQ waiting for a little bit higher, higher prices and better bounces on the NASDAQ to lay into that. Um, gosh, Euro dollar features. Like I said, that's been a great call we've had. That's been a really actually easy trade. Um, oil, we covered some shorts. I, 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 I was looking at stuff Friday and on Saturday and I was like, man, I really do want to get more short oil this week. And now we might not even get a chance. I mean, it was breaking 42 right into the close. And I was like, okay, I'm going to come in. I want to sell it this week. Big picture. There was no reason to think we're not going to these lows from 2015, the economy was in much worse shape. Um, I mean, the demand picture is completely falling out of bed now. So there's a chance to go to 20. Um, so rallies on oil, you can't chase it down here now. This is just a short covering opportunity. Still core long gold, we tagged 1700. 
on the open. I don't see why we're not going to go to 1800, 1900. You'll get your chances though, guys, to buy in this type of volatility. We're going to get the bounces. You're going to get headlines. We're going to get the administration's going to start trying to protect and throw stuff out. You know, Cudlow on Friday was already talking up specific fiscal. So they're going to, all the central banks are going to start to throw shit out there, whether it's real or not, the market will react positively. You'll get bounces. You can even get really hard sell-offs and equities. And this is going to lead me into what I want to talk about on a yen. And guys just have margin calls and there's just liquidity events and they have to blast gold. So they'll sell gold that happened last week. And those are your opportunities just to buy it right back up. We held pie down here at 1645. So when you get those hard knockdowns, that's when you want to add. When we make new highs, we always take on new highs. Like today is a good, good, good spot if you're long futures or you trim some, take some profits. All right, so what I wanted to say in Forex, this was a really wild move on dollar yen. And I, I it kind of, it, it, it distracted me, honestly. Like, we were really long and all over the initial rally in the yen. Let me just bring up the futures chart. It's a little bit, because I'm talking about being bullish the yen. So this initial move here, when the cycle peaked, am I on the right screen? Okay. When the cycle peaked, fourth quarter U.S. growth came off the top. And that was in of 2018 right here is when the bond rally started. This dollar started to move up again. Gold started to break out. Um, but then the yen, we had this nice move on the yen. We were all over that. We had a pullback. We were all over it on this move. And this, this wiggle down here, even though we plugged into pie, and I think this is going to catch, and this is part of a much bigger picture rally that's unfolding. I just, that, that move kind of threw me off because I was net long already, which via short cash dollar yen. And I did pretty good. I didn't panic. We didn't, I didn't cut, maybe I stopped out on a little bit, but I kept my position all the way and I still have it. I just don't, it's not as big as I wanted it. And the euro backed up on us a little bit. We, I still like want being long dollars. But here's the thing, like when you go back to 2008, seven, eight, and you look at the dollar index, I think there's still more room for dollar weakness until the rest of the central banks. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a currency war. We've got rates we can lower. So that's kind of what the market's focused on as far as dollar weakness. Plus you have a lot of the carry unwind and you had a lot of bad shorts in the market on the Euro down into the lows. So, uh, this is this is a this is a crazy move. There's a lot of unwind on the carry trade. Guys are borrowing in euros and um, they're also buy, borrowing in yen now. So here's this kind of brings me into what I was saying dollar yen. So I'm still core short, but this is what I think we're about to have a major move here. Nikkei's breaking down. The yen is the yen and the Swissy have been in the strongest currencies. Let me just give you guys a visual. Okay, I ran this. This is one month. So the, in the red are the countries that are, uh, we've had higher appreciation, they're kind of hot. And um, down here, these are the weaker currencies. So on a month over month basis, you can see the yen, Swissy, XAU is gold. And then the euro is even popping in there. On the one one year basis, you can still see it's Swissy, metals, and the yen. And so the yen is actually nobody's really talking about this. The yen is actually a better risk off play to be long than the dollar when we have growth slowing and this these big risk off type, you know, cycle inversions and slash bear markets. Um, and so you can kind of see this if you look back at last time we had the start of a recession and a big risk off move. So back here, 2002, there's a rally, 2007. Okay, this is dollar index. We, we came off 
throughout 07. And then we did have that risk on um, the deflationary rally in the dollar. But I'm going to show you again some of the other currencies is actually when you take this euro out, this is very heavily weighted the euro, it paints a little bit different picture. And then we had the you know more Fed action and then the dollar came off. So I'm still bullish long term on the dollar. I just think we're going to have more of an intermediate term pullback. I want to see if we can hold 93 or not. This is going to be a lot of risk management we have to do. I already went long like Euro CAD to kind of pad some of the this Euro move. I bought Euro futures last week. I advised you guys to do if you're course short, if that was an option. So the long-term bull market that started here in the dollar in 2013, 14, I'm going to show you kind of a picture when I, I laid all some of the major G4 countries against each other, but this, this is still intact. And I mean, it, this is, this is the directional long-term dollar move. I think we're going to get, we're just going to have to sit through a little bit of weakness until there's more pressure from the ECB that they, they meet this week or, and, or, uh, stuff goes wrong in the banking system over there. Those problems haven't gone away. Now, so this is what I wanted to share. I hope you guys can see this. So back in, uh, so here I overlaid, whoops. So coming into 2007. Crap on here. All right, so check this out. This the. The orange here is the yen. All right, this is the yen. I laid, this is against seven of the major currencies. I did the same thing with the dollar. So this isn't weighted like um, the DXY is. It's not heavily weighted the euro. And then I did it on the euro. And so the euro is blue, dollar is yellow, um, purple is the pound. So you guys can see here at 07, this was the direction for these guys, right? The dollar was down on a relative basis, euro, pound. And it wasn't until 2013 that we started this dollar run, right? That's the dollar bull market. But look at, look at how, look how much better the yen has done. It rallied, 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 rallied. 2013, that changed. You had a bear market as far as the yen. And then it's just been steady, man. Ever, this is this is what I mean. The yen has been so strong, and the reason that is, so I like the dollar and I like the yen. I actually like the yen better. And let me just flip back to the outright price chart. When we look at futures, I'm just sure why why this happens. So. Most people think about Japan, they say, oh man, they've got so much debt. Well, that's the government debt, right? But they're a credit, they're the number one creditor nation. So what that means is they have a ton of capital sitting around. And that's a lot of the private sector. So their net investment, um, the pool of cash that they have, they lend a lot of it out. And so the size of their assets, their foreign investments is so much larger than um, people investing in their country. And so what happens is when you have these big risk off moves, they've lent out money to investors that are bought assets. They have their own investments overseas work their capital working for them. You put on top of that, their countries having a virus issue like everywhere else around the globe, that capital comes home. They sell assets that are getting, that are rolling over that are underperforming. They sell those assets, they go to yen to bring the yen home. Um, that's, and then there's the carry trade. So a lot of people are borrowing the yen because the, the rate is so low and they're buying other currencies. Well, that starts to unwind a little bit also and it gets reflexive. So that's where you see this big yen. And look at, I mean, look at the move here. This was just one way move for years, how, how much the yen appreciated. And then there was that down, the reversal that I shared with everybody. And now we're back up again. And we had this wedge going. And I think we're gonna break it. And I think I think we've got another major one to two year rally here on the yen. So that's my favorite currency play right now. 
I mean, I'm still a dollar bull. It's just an intermediate term. I'm playing defense there. And I'd rather focus more on dollar yen, all right? And you can just see it's cratering. I mean, that was a that was a wild move that really shook a lot of people out. And that's probably part of the reason why we came down so hard is because you took care of all the positioning up here. Um, now we're pretty oversold intermediate term. No doubt we can bounce this daily cycle, but you want to sell into that. We want to be a buyer of the yen. I just think you take this low out. It's just another big picture level. It's breaking. When you look at Aussie, the oil breaking. The only thing that's really not synced up with risk off is the dollar right now. But I think the ECB is going to have to panic and Europe's gotten kind of quiet. But what's going on in Italy? It's the guys, don't get, don't lose sight of like this was this was a big move up. We held halfway. All the dollar bears were out full strength here, saying that we're collapsing. This was the start. This was technical break. Nope. So you're going to get the same type of nonsense here, and a move all the way back to 9088 on DXY would be. That would be something. That would be difficult. But this is the key spot. Now you're gonna to have to keep managing your euro risk from here to here, though. Uh, so this is just a crazy two-week move. We're up on what is this? The monthly cycle is actually coming back in. That'll be interesting if that takes over. You still have the pie line above the market. We're kind of in no man's land, getting above the bands. We failed a 200-week. Last week, well, now we're flirting with this, the highs from uh, the summer, which is all up around 114. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm looking at going into the next week. I think it's more of the same. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with what we do, oh, I'm going to start doing a, a little bit more crypto updates. So I'll just hit on that real quick. BTC is down 10%. So despite everybody thinking, oh, man, this is... Bitcoin's the solution for all our problems and everything that's going on in the financial system, blah, blah, blah. It still very much acts like a very risky asset and high speculative asset. It's not tied into the financial system the same way like I just explained on the yen. Um, so they're smashing Bitcoin too. Um, I'm, I'm long. I like it longer term. I just... I, <laughs> This was a good hold. I would have liked to see some follow through on this bar last week. It looked pretty good. And now I might be playing some defense. I wish we could buy puts on these futures. That would be really helpful. I could buy puts right near a hedge. If we got down lower, I'll take, I could realize profit on the puts, then maybe add a little bit more futures. But I'm really not worried about this long-term uptrend unless we take out 6,500. If that goes on a weekly, monthly, that opens up the door for 3,000. That would be pretty messy um i mean this just could be a lot of players just smashing the market with again it could be a liquidity thing it's just you don't know who the sellers are in this environment people are panicking or selling stuff they don't want to sell all over the place so watch pie that's the that's the big area to watch here this week I think that covers it, guys. I mean, we're absolutely crushing it. And the reason I started JRM, the reason I, I, I wanted to do this with independent traders is because I saw what happened to doctors, lawyers, retirees in 2007. I watched Schwab not give good advice. You had Kramer pounding the table, telling people to buy burn Bear Stearns all the way down to zero. You just, there's zero process and advice and people didn't make any money. It's one thing to get hedged and protect yourself, but if you can actually benefit from some BS bioweapon that the globalists unleash on us or whatever, whatever the story is, I mean, it's horrible. But what's even worse, if you're listening to old Wall Street being levered long, coming into January, February, 95%, I mean, the positioning, these guys were taking more risks than they ever have. People are just funneling you into index investing because it saves you a little bit of money on commissions and fees, but there's zero hedging now. The real good active traders, like our model is great directionally. So teach you how to work your trades. 
teach you how to take advantage of these moves, especially in bonds and treasuries. And that's what I traded for 10 years on the institutional side. It's been an amazing bull market um, for bonds and treasuries. So these opportunities guys are there and they're here now. I've been saying it for the last three months, join the prop team. I know it might be a stretch financially, but we made, did eight grand on the open on just one account today This on the, on, on the open here. I mean, these trades guys, you get in for one, two, three thousand dollars in margin. They start to go in your favor. You add to it. You add to it. You add. You add in your deuce, like I teach you, like you learn in the model. Uh, there's, you know, this accounts up three hundred and sixty-six percent in two months. The vol blows out. There's so many opportunities. I don't want you guys missing it. You can't be thinking like a broke person. Two, two grand, five grand to join a prop team that's actually crushing it and it's only March, like just do it guys, invest in yourself. You're gonna learn a ton from me every day we're trading together. You're gonna, you're gonna learn the model and my options course, Forex, whatever it is, it's all there, my 20 years of trading. I haven't taken a paycheck since 2006. Everything I've earned has just been trading directionally. There's not a lot of people out there that are willing to coach and and, and do this stuff with you guys. So there's a lot to learn. There's going to be so much more opportunity. It's not fun to have to see an economy roll over, go through a recession, maybe even worse, depending on if this full blown pandemic. And then if it comes back in the summer, when we have the, if it starts to go to the Southern hemisphere during their winter, Spanish flu did that. It's just, there's, there's, there's so much risk that the, we're 10 years off a low, 11 years off a low with no correction. The systems were heavily indebted. There's so much risk in, on so many levels. And, um, but it creates huge opportunity to make the most money in a down market the fastest. So I'll teach you the futures. I'll teach you the options. Or just join our Cycle Edge membership at least and get, get on the right side of these trades. I mean, we talked about in January that the, Global business cycle is peaking January 18th and 19th is the top four year top in the cycle. If you just sold on that alone or hedged yourself, you're, I mean, that's priceless. So anyway, guys, have a great rest of your evening. We'll be on early. Let's have a great week this week. Like we did last week. And uh, yeah, these are exciting markets. So if you guys are new, go to JenkinsCM.com. Top right. I have, um, I, well, I'm probably not going to do a webinar this week because I got some tax deadlines. But uh, the free analysis will get you in the right place. You can follow my Twitter handle at the Jason Jenkins. Twitter at the Jason Jenkins. Um, obviously, I'm posting this YouTube on the on the channel, and we have a free chat room to get you guys in the ch the chat. I mean, this is where we're posting. A lot of the, the crew and the team is pretty busy here. Um, this was my day Friday. I just posted that. I was just scrolling through. The day grand on this is that this is that same account. I have like four different, five different accounts, but um, this is just on one. So I think Wednesday the twenty nine grand. Big money. Big. This, we're big traders and a lot of you guys are new to, um, to futures. I mean, some of you guys, I started teaching two months ago and you're putting away a thousand bucks, thousand bucks, two grand. I've had $8,000 days with some of you. Um, so just proud of the whole group. Join us. Don't procrastinate. You're going to miss more of the moves that already started. Just get involved. I mean, I put that huge discount out on all the programs on, Valentine's weekend and said there's ball is coming. It's going to be amazing opportunities. All right. All right, guys. Um, I'll talk to you in the morning. Good luck out there. Laters.